So as you guys know, Apple has been pioneering the tech space for nearly 50 years. And when Steve Jobs came out and gave that speech about the iPhone for the first time, Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. In 1984, we introduced the Macintosh. In 2001, we introduced the first iPod. It changed the entire music industry. Today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. The second is a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third, is a breakthrough internet communications device. These are not three separate devices. This is one device, and we are calling it iPhone. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. Here it is. <laughs> this speech completely shocked the world, and they put BlackBerry out of business because these companies could not keep up at the pace that Apple was innovating. And now Apple has done it again, releasing the Vision Pro. So today I decided to go pick up one of these things to see if the hype is really worth that $4,000 price tag. But more specifically, I wanna see if it's a good fit for crypto to be able to analyze different projects, do technical analysis, increase my productivity, make my office a lot more dynamic because I have no clue what to put over in this space right here. I was debating between a, a cold plunge or a lazy boy. So in the next few minutes throughout this entire video, you guys are gonna see me completely transform my home office into a virtual office using this little headset. I'm gonna do an unboxing video. I'm gonna show you some of the key features. I'm gonna see how well it does looking at crypto charts. I'm also gonna share with you some key projects and altcoins that have that 100X potential with virtual reality and augmented reality technology improving over the next few years. And then I'm gonna give you my review by the end of this video so you can see if the Vision Pro is right for you, whether you're a freelance worker, you're a crypto trader, or you're just somebody who likes to watch movies at the top of Haleakala over in Hawaii or on the beaches of the moon. So you guys are gonna love this video. Let's run it. All right, so here we have the box right here. It's pretty big, a little bit bigger than a shoe box. Let's open her up. So as you can see right here, this is the headset. In terms of weight, this thing has some girth to it. I mean, the goggles itself feels like it weighs like a, a pound or two. This back mesh for the back of the head is pretty nice because I saw in the Meta one, you know, it had the battery on the back, which makes it hard to lean up against stuff if you're gonna be working from bed or laying back in a lazy boy. But let's remove the protective wrapping and let's give this thing a closer look. Now for first generation, this thing is looking pretty sleek. It's not too big. It's about the right size for the amount of technology in it. And I've had a Mac for a long period of time. I remember when they first came out with the MacBook desktops, these things were these big clunky computers and now they're in these tiny MacBook Pros. So I can see the next generations that they make for these over the next few years to get smaller and smaller. And eventually, I bet you can imagine them having glasses like this with you know these buttons right here to be able to go throughout your day to day and have a VR AR experience just with a simple pair of sunglasses. But we're years off from that, so now we have to deal with this beast. So before we do, let's see what else is in the box. This is the polishing cloth. Now obviously with the amount of sensors that are on this screen right here and my grubby pizza fingers, I'm gonna need this thing to wipe it off anytime I take it off my sweaty head after using it for you know seven days at a time. I'm gonna need this thing to keep it clean. So I'm gonna keep this cloth right here next to my 10 ounces of pure silver right here to keep it nice and warm. Underneath the cloth, we have the light seal cushion. So let's see what this is. I'm trying not to break the packaging in case I gotta take this piece of junk back. So this right here is just a little cushion to make it a little bit more comfortable, keep the light out. So as you can see right here, it already comes with one. This is just a replacement or maybe I can double stack it for extra comfort. Now, I don't know what this is. Maybe it's a, a waiver or a disclaimer in case I have a stroke or a seizure going through this thing. Oh no, it's the instruction manuals. Very helpful. So this is a picture of me right here. Oh, what's in the box? The cover for the lens, the Apple Vision Pro headset, a solo knit band, it comes with a battery that I'm about to take out, a pizza fingers cloth, USB to C charging cable, an extra light seal cushion, USB to C power adapter, and a dual loop band. Now the top of the headset, this is the digital crown. We have the fit dial to make sure the solo knit band fits on my giant head, the audio strap, the frame, the light seal, the power cable that attaches to the battery, and then the light seal cushion that comes with two. So while I'm using this thing, I'm gonna walk around with the battery in my pocket and I'll jump back into this, but I wanna see what's in the rest of the box. So this is the dual loop band and they say the apple vision pro comes with this if you want a different style of fit with some simple instructions to attach it so maybe this is more so for those wrestlers that like to wear these style of headsets when they play grab ass i'm gonna stick with this this looks a lot comfier and now here's the battery just slide it out nice and easy 
pop this thing out. I'm gonna attach this to the headset in a little bit. All right, this looks like the USB-C charging cable, the USB-C power adapter, and that's everything. Unless, unless they left me some chocolate. <laughs> okay, Apple, maybe you should figure that out next time. Now, I'm not sure if I need to hoard on to the fixins and the leftovers, if I need to re return this thing, but I'm just gonna keep them in here for now and put it to the side. So rather than go through the rest of the instructions like a normal person would do, we're just gonna plug this thing in and power it up and figure it out. This cable is pretty simple. It just plugs into the back of this. And then the other side plugs into the back end of this. And it's kind of nice that they keep these on the same side because this goes in the pocket. So you don't have cables coming out of both sides here. I'm just gonna tuck this thing away in my pocket. I'm gonna attach this to the side of the headset. So it looks like I just line up these two dots right here to plug it in. And then once it's pushed down, I rotate the thing to the lock position and now it's on. All right, here we go. Time to enter the Oasis. All right, so at first glance, here's what we're seeing from inside the office. It's a little trippy because looking out at the city, from my point of view, the buildings look like pastel cartoons. It's difficult to read the text on my computer screen right here, so we're gonna connect it through Bluetooth. But right here in the center of the screen, you can see the dashboard with Apple TV, music, meditation app, the settings, app store, notes, photos, Safari, freeform mail, messages, keynotes, compatible apps. And unfortunately, I couldn't record the setup process for this where it has me look at dots and pinch my finger to align the sensors in the camera with my eyes. Now the headset feels a little heavy on my head right here and I'm gonna be wearing my hat so you don't have to see my my five head. But let's connect my computer and run through some of the key features here. So it's very simple to use. Whatever my eyes are looking at, the headset will focus on. And to select anything, all I have to do is pinch my fingers. And if I wanna open up Bluetooth to connect to the computer, I just have to look up. I see this green little check mark and I pinch my fingers to select it. If I go into the control center and I look at Bluetooth and I click and hold, it'll open it up. And I can go into the Bluetooth settings. And as you can see already, this is pretty cool. So I'm gonna select the desktop, or I can look at my computer if my Bluetooth is turned on and I can tap the connect button above it. So my screen will go black and it'll pop up right here. Now, if I wanna move the screen around, all I have to do is look at the bottom and I'm gonna see this white bar and I tap my fingers together and hold and I can move it anywhere that I want. So what I normally do is connect this monitor to my TV to work. So if I wanted it to be about the same size, I would put it right where the monitor is. And I look in the lower right hand corner and I tap that rounded white icon and I can adjust the size to be about this small or this big. Now this is absolutely insane how massive this is, as you can see. So if I wanna move it back, I can push it all the way back here. And I'm essentially working from a massive movie theater size screen, which in my opinion is worth every single penny of the $4,000 just for this right here. But I'm gonna minimize this and show you what else we can do. So let's just make the screen size about the same size as my monitor right now so you can see what I normally see every day. And then let's open up the menu so you can see what else we can do. Now to open the menu, all I have to do is tap the button on the top of the headset on the right and it'll open up all these icons. So if I wanted to open up the internet, I just look at Safari and I tap and I can bring up my favorite websites like coinmarketcap.com and I can move this wherever I want in the office. So if I wanna look outside and have the screen as little or as big as I want, I can do that. Or if I wanna turn around and I wanna put this here in the office, I can fill up the empty space in this corner. Now the coolest thing that I absolutely love about this is these lock in place. When I turn, it stays there. So you can still see my MacBook Pro screen right here in front of me. And if I turn to the right, you can see coinmarketcap.com just massive right there in the corner. So for now, I'm just gonna move this right over here and I'm gonna leave it right there on the wall. Now to open a new internet browser, all I have to do is look up to the little plus sign in the upper right hand corner, tap my fingers and type in the website that I wanna go to. Now there's two ways that I can do this. You're gonna see a text screen right here just hovering right there in front of me and I can either look at each letter and tap them specifically for example if I want to go to YouTube I would look at each letter in the domain and I have to focus on it while pinching my finger now this takes some getting used to and at first it was pretty difficult for me to do but with a few hours of practice I got pretty good at it now the second way to do this is you're gonna see a little microphone icon when I look at it and tap my fingers then whatever I say is recorded right here and it's much faster so it's just like a normal keyboard except I don't type with my fingers I look with my eyes and I select by pinching these two fingers so I'm gonna use the voice feature YouTube Dot com. And I just click go. Now, as you can see here, coinmarketcap.com is gone and it's replaced with YouTube. But if I want to bring coinmarketcap back up, I simply look up, I look at YouTube, I pinch my fingers together and hold, 
and I can move this anywhere and let go and open up a new window. So I'm gonna look at the bottom, select the white icon, and I'm gonna move YouTube right above my computer monitor. So now I have my MacBook Pro screen, I have CoinMarketCap, and I have YouTube. Now an easier way to do this is to simply look up, and instead of clicking the plus icon, I click the icon right next to it to the right, and I select new window. Now it brought the window all the way over here, so I'm gonna select this, and I'm gonna move it to the left of my screen. And I'm gonna open up another website like Twitter, twitter.com. So if I wanna stay up to date with what's going on in Twitter every single day, I can leave this over here. But if I wanna scroll, all I have to do is look anywhere on the screen, pinch my fingers, and move my hand up or down. It's pretty easy. So the next thing that I might wanna do is add my notes so I can stay organized on what I have to do for the day. So I just look up, I'll see the green little check mark, I select that. I look at those seven little circles on the far left, that's the home screen, and now I can open my notepad. So I can move my notes anywhere that I want that's out of the way of everything else, so I'm just gonna put it right up here. And let's say if I'm gathering information from Twitter that I find really interesting, I might wanna move the Twitter screen right up here next to my notes for now, and move YouTube over here just to play in the background. And rather than listening to like rap or hip hop, I'm gonna listen to some classical music. And I'll select this first one that's about six hours long, and I can just look at the play button and tap my fingers together. If I wanna rewind, I can look at the play bar and I could rewind all the way to the beginning. Now for copyright reasons I'm not going to play it for this video but you get the big picture. And currently for whatever reason right now Apple doesn't support the YouTube app in the home screen so you can get to it for now by going to Safari until YouTube realizes how big this technology is going to be. So if I want to go full screen I just look at the full screen icon on the bottom right, tap my fingers, resize it, move it right around here. Now I can listen to music, I can watch any video, I can watch the charts, I can turn over here and look at CoinMarketCap, I can scroll through Twitter, and I can work on my videos saving links or writing down any other notes that I want to stay productive. Now one of the coolest features of this that I think is absolutely insane is what's called environments. So if I tap this button in the upper right and I look to the far left, you can see apps, people, and environments. So if I look at environments and I tap my fingers together, I could choose an environment that I would want to work from if I don't want to work from this office. So if I choose Haleakala, which is a volcano over in Hawaii, you can see part of my workspace is looking down the volcano, which is crazy. And I can turn this dial in the upper right for the immersion level that I want, whether it's half immersion or complete full immersion, where if I look around, you can see that I'm at the top of a volcano. And if I look all the way to the right, you can see I'm almost... I'm almost up there at the peak and I still have all my work screens right here to work from. So it takes some getting used to it first because you're completely transported to another place while you have these massive screens up here. So you can start imagining what you can do or imagine sitting here with a massive movie projector size screen, trading crypto, watching movies or playing video games. And as you can see, when I focus on a screen and I select it, it kind of blurs out the other screens around it. So if I want to go back to YouTube, I simply look at the YouTube screen, I tap, and it focuses it to the foreground and it blurs out anything in the background. So I can bounce around to each of these screens and I just simply look, select, look, select, look, select. And I can create this dynamic workspace from the top of a volcano in the middle of winter, in the middle of a desert sitting on some random rock by the forest in front of a nice calm lake or sitting right next to an asteroid impact on the moon. So to come back to the office, all I have to do is turn this dial back down. And you can see I can even have a hybrid of half the office, half the moon with my workspace right here. So it'll blur out a majority of what's on my desk. So we're going to dial it all the way back to the office here. And I'm going to walk around the condo to show you what happens when I get up from this seat. So if I turn over here, you can see the rest of the office. It's kind of a mess right now. I got this back massager that I just put on a normal office chair. Pretty soon I'm going to be replacing this thing with some full-fledged, heavy-duty, reclined back, back massager 7000. Now the coolest thing about this is when I move around, everything is locked in place, but it still works while I'm on the go. In my pocket here, I have the battery that plugs into the headset. So it's a little annoying having this cord because it can get in the way when I'm moving around. But if I wrap it around my back and I untangle the thing, I can either put it in my back pocket or in a side pocket and it's pretty much out of the way. So let's just say if I wanted to work standing up, my desk has this feature right here where I can push this and it starts to go up. Now, as you can see, because I set my workspace, it's moving up with the desk at the same time. So I don't have to readjust every single screen. It was locked in place where I was sitting. So the sensors on this thing are assuming that the desk is still in the same place. But now the desk is at a level that I can work from standing up. And if I wanna move around some of these screens or add some more, all I have to do is grab them, 
and put them anywhere in the office that I want. Now, if you notice wherever my headset is, is it rotates based on that. So if you want something flat on the wall or flat flush with the TV screen, so to speak, I have to move over here and I can put it right here and let go and resize it to lock it in place. Now, as you can see, if I move around, YouTube is now locked where that TV is. So if I rotate the TV set over here, YouTube is still locked at that specific angle. So if I click this, it'll reset from where my headset is and I can put it right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move Twitter somewhere over here. And if I want Twitter to take up the entire wall, I would resize it to be the size of the wall. And if I wanna move my notes, I could put my notes right here in the corner. And let's say I wanna magnify coin market cap to take up this entire wall. I can just make it massive, bring it in here and stick it to the wall. Now, as you can see, it kind of moved the notes. So I wanna bring the notes forward a little bit. I'll put the notes right there. And here's my MacBook Pro screen, where as you can see right here, those are all the cuts in this video that I've made so far. Now, one of the only complaints that I have so far is I can't use my fingers to select from my MacBook Pro. I have to use the Bluetooth from this Logitech mouse or this Logitech keyboard to work like I normally would, except it's on a bigger screen, which honestly is not that big of a deal because if I'm editing complicated videos, I need to use command shortcuts on the keyboard to make things faster. So for that reason, I need the MacBook Pro desktop to be near the keyboard for me to edit. So I'm gonna move it up here. I'm gonna resize this. So if I need to edit any videos, I can go right to the desk. If I wanna look at CoinMarketCap, I can come over here and I can scroll through all the altcoins, which I'm gonna be coming back in here in a little bit to show you guys. Or I can look to the right and I can scroll through Twitter to see what's going on with crypto and the social media space. If I need to add anything to my notes, I got the keyboard that levitates and pops up right here, but there's still a lot of empty space right here that we could put something really cool to look at. So how we're gonna do that is I'm gonna click the button at the top right. It's gonna bring up the menu. I'm gonna go to the App Store. I'm gonna move the App Store on this wall, increase the size. I'm gonna scroll down to see what's hot this week and you can see Jigspace 3D. I'm gonna click Get, double click to install, or I can simply open up the menu and I can click and drag to the left. And I can see some of the apps that come pre-installed or some of the apps that I've currently installed, like Polycam, or I can select Jigspace. Now we're about to get jiggy with it, man. Now all I have to do is look where I want the jig to appear. So if I want it to appear right there on the floor, I'm gonna tap right there to place the jig. So I can make it as big as I want. I can rotate it any direction. I can make it as small as I want. And you can even see the string that shows the percentage based on the size. So if I rotate it like this to see the inside of this turbine or whatever this thing is called, and I let go, it'll lock it in place. So I can resize, I can move, or I can spin. So I can even remove these objects and take the top off and leave it wherever I want. And then I can resize the whole entire structure and release. Now let's go to the gallery. All right, now you know we gotta go to the race cars. Alfa Romero, C43, let's go. Let's put that bad boy right there. Yeah, this is absolutely ridiculous. All right, let's resize it. Let's make it big enough to block out all the stuff on the floor. And now we have a race car right here in the office. And if I wanna take the wheels off and look at the tires, and see what's on each side, I can do that. I could throw it up in the air and let it levitate like this. And we're gonna put it back on the car so we don't do it dirty like that. Now, Jigspace also has a lot of other 3D rendered models and Apple, they call this thing a spatial computing device when in reality it's an AR, augmented reality or virtual reality device as well too. So you guys can see the industries that this is set to disrupt, even nurse training right here. So obviously I'm not gonna be a nurse. I mean, I could be a immersed if I wanted to, but this is incredible, look at this. So can you guys see how this is gonna help people learn with 3D rendered models, whether it's through something like this, learning about things like the human heart, how a catheter works for heart stent procedures. So as much as I wanna leave this giant heart in the corner of my office here, I think the Alfa Romero is a much better fit. So like this video and subscribe to the channel if you agree. Now let's go over to the other room and let's see what it looks like from over here. There we go, there it is. And also when I look at myself in the mirror, you'll see that there's these rendered eyes right here that aren't real eyes, but by scanning my eyes, if there's anyone in the room, it makes it look like I'm at least looking at them versus this blue screen. And when I come all the way over here, you can see the rest of the condo, and you could still see the car over there. You could still see an outline of my workspace. And if I wanna completely redesign my living room and the dining room right here, all I have to do is push the button at the top and the menu will pop up right in front of me. And I can take some of my favorite photos and completely redesign this entire area. So the first photo that we're gonna put up is an original painting of the, the Mona Lisa. As you guys know, she was a, a heavy beer drinker. So we're gonna put it right up here. We're gonna release. And now we got this picture right up here on the wall. And to go along with the Mona Lisa, we have to do the Last Supper picture right here above the blank space on the TV. We'll go ahead and leave it right there. And then for another picture, we gotta do MJ throwing down a dunk. 
And we're gonna put him all the way up here in the corner because he's Air Jordan, of course. Let's go ahead and bring coin market cap over here to cover this entire wall. So if I want to come out here and work from the living room, make some food in the kitchen while looking at altcoins or some art, one of the main industries I see this completely revolutionizing is art specifically through non-fungible tokens towards the later stage of this bull run. For example, let's say you have an NFT you want to put up anywhere in your living space. You have multiple of these headsets for other people to see. Then you could put it up and you, and you could show off your NFTs because these things, you know, whether you call them art or not, this is just an example, obviously. You know, people are crazy about NFTs for bragging rights to show their friends how much they spent on these things, which are absolutely ridiculous. But can you guys see why virtual art is gonna be massive? Because it's taking the digital and it's making it more physical than ever before. I mean, it almost feels like I can grab this thing. See, I can even go outside on the balcony here and I can look at the view of all the boats out there on the bay and I can still see everything inside of the condo. So let's take coin market cap right here. Let's go back to the office and I can walk with it while looking at it. Now, I obviously got to be careful here because if I'm walking here on the moon, I might run into one of the walls on my condo. So obviously I want to make sure that the environment, I can see where I'm going here. So let's put coin market cap back up on this wall. Take a seat here with the back massaging chair and let's look at which altcoins are going to absolutely explode in the VR and the AR space. So right here on coin market cap, we can look at categories and click this. And you'll see the top categories based on average price change, market cap, dominance, volume, gainers and losers. And obviously some of the biggest industries like AI and big data are going to do well. Generative AI, DeFi, gaming, real world assets, layer ones, virtually all the top projects in the Ethereum, Arbitrum, Solana, Optimism, and Avalanche ecosystem, NFTs and collectibles, as you just saw. Imagine your 3D collectibles sitting in your virtual workspace, just like the race car right here. So right now it's more of a solo experience, you know, with me and my virtual nerd den right here but the metaverse is going to make a comeback when more of these headsets are compatible with each other and more people are able to hop up online and walk around each other's virtual show space for example imagine if i were able to look out to the city of miami and anyone who's in my contact list has a headset on and it registers a pinpoint for where they live where it can either say do not disturb if they don't want to be bothered or if they want to showcase their virtual space you can look at it and tap it and it brings you into their environment where you can move around and you can look at everything Thing that they've built. When that happens, then metaverse projects will start to absolutely explode. Right now, the metaverse is just sitting there at a $26 billion market cap. So I could see over a trillion dollars coming into the metaverse over the next few years. Now, if we look at the VR and the AR space right now, you can see that the total market cap is only 4.5 billion dollars out of 1.92 trillion dollars right now which is virtually nothing and as you can see render is the number one project followed by theta then engine then t fuel and a bunch of lower market cap projects the further down the list that we go now obviously the number one project in the space right now is render with a two billion dollar market cap city at five dollars and 53 cents it's listed on ethereum polygon solana as well and right away this is a lot easier to use because i don't have to use my mouse i can just look and click for example if i look at markets and i tap we can see that renders listed on binance coinbase gate.io kucoin kraken among many others, about 15 pages of exchanges. If we go to Render's website, the first piece of text says rendering the metaverse, distributed GPU rendering on the blockchain. And so Render Network provides near unlimited decentralized GPU computing power for the next generation of 3D content creation. Because as you guys know, this takes an incredible amount of GPU rendering. So the Render Network is providing artists the ability to scale their work at a fraction of the cost when compared to other centralized GPU cloud systems. And they were launched back in 2017. Now I made a video about render a little while back that we can check out right here now also so two projects i want to talk about at the same time and show you guys which one is about to have a breakout is injective and render injective has had its breakout render is about to have a massive breakout as well too injective is at almost 40 bucks right now it's cooling off for a little bit after rallying up from 17 bucks sitting at 40 dollars with a three billion dollar market cap and it passed its all-time high so it's in price discovery so in price discovery you know anything's possible whereas render has not gone into price discovery it's all-time high is seven dollars and seventy cents so is injective a good play right now i don't think injective is is a good play because when you're in price discovery yes we could go higher but i like very well but render is having a breakout right now 
um, alongside Injective. And let's look at the charts and let's compare these two because Render is at a $1.7 billion market cap, sitting at $4.80. And then uh, Injective has double that. And looking at the chart right here, you know, from the high, we see these charts play out very similar where we see, you know, a sell off from the high. We see a complacency stage, you know, through here for Injective. We see the complacency stage through here for Render. And then we see anxiety, denial, panic to the downside, anxiety, denial, panic to the downside. And then we range near the bottom to find a, a bottom where this is the accumulation period. And the accumulation period for um, Injective lasted, you know, about 266 days. We can see for, for Render, it lasted about, you know, 260 something days as well too. Then we break out from this range to test previous zones of support, which act as resistance right here for both projects. This one was right around Render, Injective was around four bucks right here. And then we back test the previous range as support. You can see a back test here in March of 2023, a back test in March of 2023. Then we break out, form a new range, retest previous zones of uh, resistance that were support before. And then we consolidate for an extended period of time again. So Injective consolidated for about 192 days in this range. And same thing for uh, Render. It consolidated, if we were to measure from this high, you know, about 178 days before we're breaking out now. So what happened for Injective is we consolidated for an extended period of time for about 45 days, for about a month and a half. And so we're seeing that happen right now for Render, but it's just grinding up. So the next move for Render is really the all time high of $8 and 60 some odd cents or whatever the high is. And so a move for Render to do that, no guarantees here, obviously, right? Crypto is risky. This could all turn around and drop tomorrow if Bitcoin turns around, but it's about 80% away from the all time high. So almost a, almost a two X. So Render is in price discovery right now. You know, Render, if, um, Injective is, is in price discovery. Sorry, I keep getting these mixed up. But it, because Injective is in price discovery, you know, eventually it's going to top out and it's going to see a deeper correction. It might back test the all time high and then uh, that money would flow out of Injective into other projects like Render. And so I would expect Render to retest its all time high and go into price discovery at some point. So you can't go wrong keeping Render and keep Injective on your watch list as well too. So as you guys can see, we were spot on about Render. And some people might be wondering, is it too late? When Render's up 14,000% when we click all, but the all-time high is around eight bucks and we're still only at about $5.54. So just like I mentioned in this video, the reason why Render is doing so well, they say they're the first network to transform the power of GPU into a decentralized economy of connected 3D assets. Used for media, industry, augmented reality, mixed reality, gaming, medical, and virtual reality. So with this headset, Set coming out less than two weeks ago. That's why this project is pumping. Now I'm going to be making more altcoin videos talking about which projects I'm the most bullish on for the rest of this bull run. And you guys can go to bullrunners.com to discover our top altcoin picks first before these videos come out. And you can get early bird access to our financial education platform when that's released. You don't need any previous crypto trading experience. All you have to do is click the button on the page, put in your best email address, and you'll be instantly subscribed to our daily video newsletter where you receive the best information to help you prepare for the worst that's yet to come in the economy. Because together, we're gonna go camping on the beaches of the moon with our Bugattis. So if I wanna be able to trade crypto using TradingView with my Bugatti on the moon in my living room, then I can do that. So let's see how easy it is to use TradingView. So one thing I noticed right away is looking on the right hand side, if I wanna select XRP or XLab or XDC, it kind of has trouble knowing where my eyes are looking. So if you have problems, you can zoom it all the way in and you can even push on the screen where you want it to select. And boom, it brings up XRP's price chart. So if I wanna move the chart, I can look anywhere, pinch my fingers and I can drag it around. On the right hand side, if I look at the price, I can pinch and I can adjust the price to make the chart bigger or smaller. So, so far this is really interactive. I absolutely love this. The only thing that I've noticed editing this video while I'm making it is it's a little bit blurry. So unless I bring it closer, what I'm actually seeing in my field of view is wider so I can see this whole entire screen, whereas the recording shows a limited recording view. So this might give me issues when I'm making technical analysis videos for you guys. So I'm gonna bounce back and forth between the regular old school MacBook Pro screen recording style and these more immersive, cool Bugatti on the moon style VR headset. So let's see how easy it is to draw trend lines. All I have to do is look to the left, select the trend line tool, and I pinch and I move to where I wanna start the trend line. So let's go to the 11th of May. Let's let go and let's double tap. And you can see it starts the trend line and I just hold and I move it to wherever I want. And if I release and double tap, it lets it go. And I can look at the exit, exit out of that, look anywhere on the chart and boom, now I have a trend line. If I wanna draw another trend line, 
just do the same thing. And it's kind of tricky to get it exact, but I'm sure with some more practice, I'll get the hang of it. Now, another bummer here is if I want to trade crypto and use something like MetaMask or a decentralized wallet, you know, MetaMask is not available in Safari. And as you guys know, if I bring up the menu here, you can see Safari, but no Google Chrome. Now, for whatever reason, I can't figure out how to find it or how to use it on this. So another solution is I connect my MacBook Pro and I bring the screen right up here and I can use my trackpad and my keyboard while laying comfy right here on the couch. Because as you can see, I have MetaMask here on Google Chrome, which allows me to connect to decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, where I just click the connect button, I click MetaMask, and it just asks me for my password to be able to unlock my wallet. So what I can do is I can put it right up here. If I need to place a trade, I would use my trackpad and keyboard. And then to analyze the project that I'd be trading, I would use Safari on the Apple Vision Pro to use TradingView. So the next step for Apple is to allow me to look at the screen that's connected with my MacBook Pro and use my fingers to look and pinch. So as you can see, it doesn't work unless I use my trackpad and keyboard. But that really doesn't bother me at all because I can have multiple screens. And I don't have to sit staring down at my computer screen, pulling my neck forward, which is bad for my back. And I can lay here on the couch with partial immersion right here or complete full immersion working from the moon. So if you're considering buying the Apple Vision Pro, here's a list of the pros and the cons that I've discovered over the past two days of using this product. So one of the pros is the solo knit band, making it really comfy. And it's easy to take the Vision Pro on and off. And it's super simple to tighten and loosen the fit with the knob on the side. You know, I can't even feel it on my head and it makes it easy to work while laying down or watch movies over on the couch. Now for one of the cons, the front of the goggles does have some weight. You know, if you have a smaller nose like me as well too, then light will shine through the curvature in the bottom. So when you are doing full immersion, you can still see some light from your environment. And also one of the major cons that everyone is talking about is the cost of the Apple Vision Pro. It runs anywhere from $3,500 all the way up to nearly $4,000 if you add all the extra features like the optical inserts, you know, the backpack to carry the Vision Pro on the go, uh, the extra battery, you know, Apple Care in case you break anything. So it's definitely pricey for someone who might make less than six figures per year. But the pro is you can use the Apple Vision Pro to make money if you're a content creator, making that price tag irrelevant because it makes your videos that much more dynamic and interesting to watch, giving your viewers something they've never seen before. So the cost becomes irrelevant. So if you use your Apple Vision Pro to make money rather than just, you know, sit around and watch movies on the couch all day, on the moon. Whereas for those who aren't content creators or don't have a business, then you would have to justify if it's worth, you know, close to $4,000 to make browsing the internet or watching movies or using apps or listening to music worth that price tag. Now, another con is Apple needs to add a feature where when I connect my MacBook Pro, I can use the look in the tap feature to work rather than just my trackpad and my keyboard on the MacBook Pro display. However, this isn't that bad considering I can open up a new window with Safari and use the look and touch feature uh, while I have my MacBook right in front of me, you know, if I want to type or use the trackpad for more complicated tasks like drawing trend lines on TradingView or buying and selling different cryptocurrencies, that way I don't make any mistakes using the headset. Or if I'm editing videos, it's nice to use my MacBook Pro keypad because I need the command function keys to make a lot of jump cuts when I screw up. So a major pro is multitasking is absolutely amazing. You know, I love how you can connect to the MacBook Pro to work using the keyboard and the trackpad while also opening up Safari, you know, YouTube, my notepad and virtually unlimited browsers around my workspace and apps at the same time, making it much easier to get stuff done without needing to click through dozens of tabs just on my MacBook Pro alone. Because when you have all these tabs open on your MacBook, it gets confusing to know where certain tabs are. So this makes it much more efficient to get stuff done faster because the faster I can get stuff done, the more money I make. And you can even use your MacBook Pro keyboard and trackpad on the other browsers that you have open in your workspace. Now, a big con is when I'm recording, sometimes things are a little blurry and if I'm looking at TradingView, CoinMarketCap, or anything that requires the viewer to read specific text, for me, it shows up very clear, but the recording is not as clear. And also my field of vision using the headset is wider than what the recording shows. So I can't tell if the object I'm recording is in frame versus what I'm actually seeing with my physical eyes. Now, if you're not a content creator, you don't have to worry about this because the 4K display is super crisp and clear. So I can clearly see everything I need to when I'm getting my work done. But the Apple Vision Pro right now is a very isolated experience and they need to add a feature where you can have more than one Apple Vision Pro user in the same environment environment at the same time, seeing the same things like if you're watching a movie or you're working on a document together, because right now it's just you with your headset building in your own virtual nerd den environment. Now, when I receive text messages on my phone, I see a notification pop up on the Apple Vision Pro and I can simply look at the text, click 
and I can respond to anyone using the headset versus having to take off the headset and text back on my phone every single time. Now, responding back to text messages or just typing in general, if I wanna to go to a website using the Apple Vision Pro keyboard, it's super slow. And it reminds me when I was learning how to type with just my two fingers back in grade school. So if you want a faster typing experience, you're gonna to have to connect your MacBook Pro and use the keyboard. Now, one of the major pros that I absolutely love is the environments feature because it makes it really feel like you're transported to another location and with full immersion or partial immersion, you get to choose the level you want by simply turning the dial at the top of the headset. Now, the only con that I can think of for the environments feature is there's only six scenic environments right now to choose from, but I'm sure that Apple will be adding more when they make future updates. Now, a major pro is loading 3D rendered images looks absolutely incredible, and it really feels like the object is in your workspace, along with the floating browsers and apps that are locked in place, giving you a fully immersive augmented reality experience. And for this alone, you can't truly appreciate how awesome this is until you try it out for yourself. Now, certain apps like Netflix or YouTube for whatever reason have chosen not to integrate with the Apple Vision Pro. And when companies like Netflix were asked about the Apple Vision Pro, the CEO responded saying that it's so subscale, it's not even relevant. So just like any new piece of tech that costs over $3,500, it's gonna take some time for mass adoption. But I could see eventually companies like Netflix and YouTube and other apps integrating with Apple's spatial computing devices when Apple releases other models that are more affordable for the average peasant. And Apple has created a thing called personas because when somebody who's next to you looks at you, they can't see your eyes. So they render up what your eyes kind of look like. And even during FaceTime, what your face looks like for your digital avatar. However, this is still in the beta stage because the rendering of your face is not 100% accurate and it can be kind of creepy sometimes. When you start making facial expressions, it reminds me of those old school NBA or NFL games where the characters look pretty good, but when you get up close and they start talking, you can clearly see that it's not real. Now, when you FaceTime a friend or a family member, normally on your desktop or your iPhone, when you flip your screen around, you can show them either your front facing camera from your phone or your screen on your MacBook. Whereas using the Apple Vision Pro, they get to see your field of view to see everything in your augmented reality workspace. Now, there are some bugs during the Apple Vision Pro. For example, several times during the recording of this video, the recording would just randomly stop and I would keep talking for an extra 20 to 30 minutes, not even knowing that the recording was paused. And when I would go back to watch the replay, I had to redo half the video, which was very frustrating. And the reason why this video took so long to come out and when taking the headset off and putting it back on, it would disconnect my MacBook Pro. And there were some errors reconnecting it where it didn't recognize my device through Bluetooth and it took an extended period of time. And also the battery life only lasts for about two hours if you're not plugged into the power outlet. So Apple will need to improve the battery life for later generation models. So for now, you know, if you're on the go and you don't have a power outlet, you're gonna have to buy another battery if you want to do stuff for longer than two hours and the cord attached to the battery can also get tangled at times, you know, similar to the old Apple earbuds. When you move quickly, you know, you can accidentally tug the battery off the table or, you know, rip the cord out. So you have to be aware when the battery is in your pocket versus when it's just sitting on the desk while you're in an office chair. So even with all of those cons, I believe the pros completely outweigh them. I'm actually very, very happy with this device and I'm gonna be using it for ongoing content creation, for productivity, and many other things that I'm gonna be covering on this channel. So if you guys appreciate videos like this, if you wanna see more content like this, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share it with a friend who's considering using the Apple Vision Pro or anything related to crypto, social media marketing, entertainment, content creation, you name it. And if you guys wanna get early bird access to our financial education platform when that's released and get access to our private community and inner circle of entrepreneurs, crypto traders, and everyday people looking to create more passive income so they can do the things that they love. And make sure you go to the links in the description below. And with that being said, I'll see you on the next one. Stay bullish.